Thanks for attending this talk this afternoon. Uh, Jeff was talking about the quality of the user interface. I want to talk a bit about uh, the quality of the, the code under it, uh, about the quality of your tests. Um, so the topic is uh, test coverage of uh, Qt, C++, and QML code. I'm Harry Porton. I'm working at FrogLogic. We're very much into automated testing of graphical user interfaces, uh, but today I'm going to talk about uh, the mentioned topic of the uh, coverage of the code under the hood. So what is test coverage or code coverage? Um, I guess you all have seen it. It's the measurement of how much of your code, how many lines, functions, or whatever have been uh, exercised by your test. Um, I will not say that uh, this is a perfect indicator uh, for, your, uh, for the quality of your software, but it's a very good indicator. Still, even if you have 100% test coverage, it doesn't mean that there are no bugs left in your code. So I want to be honest with that. Um, those who work in specific industries like railway, automotive, or if you're building nuclear plants uh, with Qt, um, which we all hope for, um, you may be uh, forced to uh, look at uh, dynamic coverage, also static coverage, and other metrics. Uh, but even those who are, don't work under such strictly regulated uh, regimes uh, still should take a look at how well are you testing. Um, I will quickly go through the typical kinds of coverage measurements, and uh, later I'll show all of that live with some uh, Qt code uh, for both C++ and QML. Very basic form is the function coverage. You just measure is each of the function of your application being called. It's just the entry into the function, so if the function exits in some other way or maybe even crashes, you could still consider the function to be covered. That's a good way to, be st to get started, to get the first impression, but it doesn't go very much into detail. The other probably most uh, popular one is line coverage. You're looking at the question, is each of the lines of your application being tested? Um, this is a bit C-style code. Uh, there's an integer in there. The question is, is this really a statement to be covered or not? Um, think of the X rather being a Q-string. You know there is some code running behind the scenes if constructing a Q-string, so suddenly I would consider that to be a line. Of course, it's a statement, so the more precise measurement instead of just counting lines would be counting statements. As you know, C, C++, JavaScript all support several statements in a single line, so this is more precise. Still, this is very, very basic, and there are so many ways that you can tune those metrics. I have seen uh, people stretching their code out to get bigger numbers uh, uh, because their colleagues or uh, bosses will judge them better um, if they have higher coverage. So this is one is basically easy to cheat, and it's not about a bad intention. It's also about a metric that is not really giving the full truth. So I will talk about some a bit more sophisticated one. There is the decision coverage or branch coverage, almost the same, uh, where you look at the question, does each if statement take its two outcomes? What about switch statements? What about loops, switch cases? So each time if you draw a flow diagram, where is a different branch being taken? And also consider that here, this function could easily be covered by 100% uh, percent, uh, statement coverage if you just hit all of those statements. But keep in mind that there is an invisible else in here. Decision coverage would just give you 50% uh, if you call it once. So here's an example calling it with 0, 1, 1. Uh, this will only hit uh, the if branch. Uh, but the invisible else branch also needs to be covered. Otherwise, there's the question, why did the programmer add the if statement in the first place? So you need two tests to fully uh, get a decision coverage for this function. And also note here, if those uh, two first expressions are false, then the short circuit evaluation that's there in uh, C++ and JavaScript will omit the evaluation of the last term here. So there is even no statement whether C has been equal to zero or not. This is left out. Um, so even if you do coverage analysis, you will not analyze parts that the normal compiler will not execute either. Now we're getting a bit more sophisticated. Um, it's the question, how did this decision in the if statement actually uh, get reached? In this case, there is a Boolean expression with three sub-expressions, and in condition coverage, one demands that each of those expressions has been true and false at least once. 
again, there is the short circuit evaluation. So if A has been not equal to zero, then the B check is not done anymore. This is why this table uh, has some uh, missing entries. And uh, uh, you also only need uh, three tests to get 100% condition coverage. This can already be tough to reach, and if you have never done code coverage analysis on your project, uh, maybe this is already too tough to get started. But it's something to try out later. Now, some more sophisticated ones which uh, are really, really getting tough, but are mandated and still interesting to look at because they give you new insights in your application logic, and that is multiple condition coverage. That one requires you to try out all possible combinations of conditions. So not just each uh, uh, condition should be true and false. You want to try out all the permutations. There are three ones in this example. Uh, in some languages, you would need uh, eight test cases. But due to the short circuit evaluation in our languages, um, there are only five needed. This can grow very, very quickly, though. Here's an example with four Boolean expressions, and it's already, um, let me check, seven test cases that are needed to fulfill that. This can be, get really tough and sometimes will maybe make you rewrite your code not to have so many conditions in a single uh, decision here. Um, some people came up with an idea to simplify this a little bit since a lot of tests can almost be redundant. And someone, maybe it was NASA or so, I'm not sure, they came up with something uh, which will not fully go through. So the modified condition decision coverage is every point of an entry and so on, so on. You don't have to fully read that. Um, the important part is at the end, a condition is shown to affect a decision's outcome independently by varying just that condition. So the idea is that you don't try all the conditions that don't really have an impact on the final decision, but you limit it to the ones that make a big difference. And going back to the previous example uh, for multiple condition coverage, uh, seven test cases are needed, but if you use the modified version, only five of them are necessary. So that's, that's still a doable kind of uh, coverage level. Now, of course, we have the Qt conference, so what's so special about Qt here? First, if you're doing C++, um, you have all of those nice helper tools and language extensions, as I might call them at this point, for Qt. So there is mock uh, generating the meta object code. There's the resource compiler. Some of us are using the user interface compiler. There are macros like Q objects. Um, previously, there was a Q for each macro and so on. And if you think of all of those, those generators or macros all contain some logic and they expand to some code and theoretically all of that would be covered as well. And you may be fighting uh, with uh, such problems seeing that generated code may not be of, not of interest to you. Bigger challenge, of course, comes with QML. That's something cute specific mixture of JavaScript and the declarative uh, language. It is like almost all scripting languages uh, so dynamic that you can even evaluate new code on the fly. And the question is, does this code also need to be covered? So it's very hard to even get a static overview is uh, how much code is in your project. It might be that you have already reached 99% of coverage and suddenly some code is being evaluated with the eval statement uh, that again contains new information and your coverage may go down. So that's at least a, uh, a possible uh, problem uh, that you may decide to follow up or not. And in the case of QML, there's the plain interpreted version and the compiler. So those are causing special challenges if you're looking at the coverage. The tools, I will uh, list a few here. Those are the ones that are most popular in this area. There is Bullseye. Uh, there's a product from our company called Squish Coco. There's, of course, GCOF. There's PureCoff, uh, which is uh, the dinosaur uh, in that area. I think it's still maintained by a company. Uh, there is TestWell, and uh, VectorCast is also producing a code coverage tool. Um, I don't have time to group those, um, just uh, be aware that uh, they all support different coverage levels, so you should decide in front, up front, which one do you want to have, and they are working in different concepts. So, for example, PureCov is looking at your binary, 
Uh, you don't need to recompile it, which is very convenient, but as a result, it can't do things like condition coverage because the compiler has optimized away all that information, so it's not easily ex or not accessible at all. Same with GCOF. Um, it's built into GCC and it works at a rather uh, late level, so um, you cannot do uh, release builds uh, and uh, you also have limitations in terms of uh, checking the individual um, in conditions. In terms of how to run your test, uh, I cannot even list the full uh, set of tools here. Uh, if you do C++ programming, programming, Qt comes with its own Qt test lib. There are many alternatives. I've listed the ones that I hear most often being used, CPP unit, CXX unit, and Google test. Um, internally, uh, my colleagues are also uh, using uh, the catch framework now, which uh, also leads to very nicely written unit tests. Um, you can do some GUI testing with uh, Qt testlib as well, so there are functions to click on individual objects. Um, that's something where our company is specializing on with our testing tool Squish. Um, if you are doing QML, again, uh, Qt provides a test runner. There is a module specific to Qt Quick, so it again contains some uh, functions to interact with uh, Qt Quick UI controls. Uh, that's also an area we are supporting next to the Qt widgets. Now, some general guidelines um, um, that I will uh, pass on. Um, yeah, set uh, some goals uh, for, your, uh, for the coverage of your project, but keep them realistic. If you choose something between 17 and 80 percent, that's already uh, quite ambitious. Um, if you are in a safety critical uh, area like the company producing the brakes of the train that took me here, uh, please reach for 100 percent and um, check all kinds of other things. Um, but if you have never looked at the coverage, you may see something like 50, 60 percent maybe if you have done a good job. Um, in that situation, I would say don't try to reach a certain number, but rather look for differences. So at least establish the guideline not to have your coverage ever decrease again. And also not code. All code is equally important. Uh, look at uh, code that is more critical, that is more complex, uh, code with higher churn. I still talk about that. So uh, prioritize. And don't go after some numbers uh, just for the fun of it or uh, uh, maybe there's a salary increase. If you get a higher uh, coverage level, be uh, careful about that. It's not always contributing to the quality. Okay. Code churn, something from Microsoft, just real quick. Um, they have looked at the changes in code, how many lines got added, changed, removed, who did those changes, and so on. And uh, with some big data analysis, you can find out that maybe uh, those changes are more responsible for bugs than um, old code that hasn't been touched for a while. Another indicator to prioritize your testing is looking at some all kinds of metrics. There are more than 100, I guess. Lines of code is very primitive. Cyclometric code complexity, as defined by McCabe, is very popular. But here, I also caution the absolute values are very uh, hard to interpret. I would rather look at the changes. So what if a file suddenly increased its complexity from 5 to 7 or something? That would be an example to look at it more critically as that's more likely to introduce a bug. Okay, now, but now moving over to some practical uh, demos. I will uh, use a Qt-based uh, calculator here to do some uh, manual testing it first. So let's run this real quick. So you see classic calculator, no necessarily fancy functions. I will um, instrument the application with, uh, with our cool uh, tool Coco here to show you how this analysis looks like. So I'm rebuilding the application in a special way. It's getting some uh, small things added to uh, track uh, what kinds parts of it are being executed. And um, I will now do some testing. And the most primitive test I'm going to do is just launch the application and do nothing. Of course, something will be happening, and uh, we can already uh, look at that. Um, I won't go into details of those files here, but we are looking at the C++ project here. We see all the code that should be covered in gray. Uh, things like the commands and preprocessor statements have all been expanded, uh, so to the real code that stands behind those or not. You can look at the classes, etc. But there is no test coverage visible at all yet. Um, let me now pick uh, one of, of the generated file. So there's an execution file. 
Um, this was just a startup. I did a manual test, it passed, everything is okay. Um, let's import the data and some colors are showing up. The files have colors and as I said, define what's good, what's bad in your project. Um, you can look at the individual functions, you can browse through the source code and see what's being covered here. This is line coverage, um, but as I said, more returns are possible. Let's go to the multiple condition coverage, and you see the coverage has gone down to 9%, but that's not a bad thing. It just shows you that there were much more combinations in your software than there was code. And um, yeah, not much of it has been run yet, so not that interesting yet. Uh, let's run a second test of the application. I will uh, do something simple as 1 plus 2 equals 3. Oh, sorry, mistyped. Um, so, manual tester says this is okay. Um, that was a subtraction. It passed. Importing that. Um, I'll do a third test. Um, to provoke an error here. Actually, I have the feeling that this thing is, in fact, a bit buggy. Uh, just getting a minus one here and attempting to do calculate the square root. Um, so this gives me an error, um, which so it doesn't support imagine uh, numbers there. And uh, I will uh, import uh, uh, the square root here. This was a failure in the sense. Uh, we'll import that, and now we have three test cases showing up here. And uh, if you want to look look at them in a in a separate mode, and maybe even compare them or see how well are they doing. So some a feature that our tool covers is, for example, the calculation of the optimal order. In this case, the tool tells me the test calculating the square root is giving me 55% coverage already. Quite a lot, but it's a small project. The subtraction gives me 3% in addition, and the initial startup is not even worth executing in terms of coverage, as it doesn't give me any additional coverage at all. Now, um, imagine you have 100 tests and want to find out do new ones add any benefit at all. Um, there are possibilities to compare coverage. So in this case, uh, or we compare again this one, um, compare the square root test against others, and you'll see that uh, some functions got some different coverage, um, some files, and so on. So this is a relative comparison. And I'll show you a third uh, nice thing that you can do if you have all the coverage uh, data calculated. And uh, this is, uh, all right, this is well, C++. Um, also evaluating uh, uh, changes. So, for example, the error message maybe wasn't spelled correctly. I will uh, uh, put this into uh, a diff file, and the question is, um, is there any test uh, for it? Um, so, we have th those three tests as candidates. We'll do a uh, patch file analysis. Uh, uh, let's pick the file. I don't know what I'm doing wrongly here. Oh, yeah, there was a different version, but you can um, um, list all the tests that are touching that area. So that also keeps your testing efforts low. OK, but uh, since I'm running short on time, uh, let's not uh, fix the version conflict there, but rather look at other ways to uh, calculate your uh, tests. Um, here I did manual testing, but of course, typically you would either use uh, one of the unit testing frameworks, as I showed you. So this is here the CPP uh, unit um, tests, and uh, let me run that. So that went real quick, much quicker than a manual test, of course. And uh, Let's look at the coverage of those. I'll import that data. And in this case, there's even an association that the test developer did between test cases and coverage. So you can even later find out which of those unit tests, here's a failing one, has maybe a different coverage than a passing one. So that's the second type of uh, doing testing, but now to complete the demonstrations here, 
let's look at the new version of the Qt calculator, which is a QML-based uh, version, looking much uh, prettier, of course. Um, uh, so uh, I will uh, turn on the uh, coverage measurement. This is not a recompilation because this is now a dynamic uh, Qt application, and uh, whatever I enter here will lead to some JavaScript code being evaluated, and I can uh, also uh, look at that to show you the difference to C++ uh, code. Uh, so it worked correctly. Import that. And you see this on the first side, it looks like uh, same as uh, C++. Um, there are some special items. So there is uh, the JavaScript code embedded into the QML element description, um, some covered, some non-covered items. Um, there is some separate JavaScript file being in here. Um, so there are several ways to embed uh, the JavaScript into a QML application, but still it's the same. It's really not the same language in terms of its types and all, of course, but uh, the coverage analysis can be uh, done in uh, one go. Okay, how many minutes do I have left? Uh, or oh, five minutes, so I'll just do a, maybe a way uh, or yeah, show you uh, what we are doing as part of our contribution to Qt. So we are running uh, the tests of a few um, uh, open source uh, projects and uh, uh, we publish those results every night. Um, so let's look at the Qt test, uh, which has 60% condition coverage, which is really, really, really great. Uh, uh, you may s have seen other examples of OpenSSL, which are much more critical in terms of security, which have a lower coverage. And so all the Qt contributors can go here, uh, see there are some items that are not being covered. So in this case, um, this is a case where there would have been 100% line coverage, but uh, the OK parameter has uh, never been false. So there are small, two small items missing in this uh, file, so two additional tests would bring the QQML script string to 100% coverage. Um, yeah, so using our UI testing tool as a uh, demo to also show some um, automated testing. Um, I will use the same uh, calculator done in QML. being launched here, and I will only once perform uh, some manual interactions, five times two equals zero. Um, the test, of course, should really always verify that something is correct. I will not only check for the, uh, the 10 here, but I will actually verify the whole look of the UI, um, something I wouldn't do for all the results, but at least once a complete test. Let's stop the recording. And you see here's a test that uh, will uh, cover at least one operator. Uh, let's make it also fail. So different numbers report a failure. Uh, we can look at the difference here. Uh, Screenshot showing the difference. Uh, these are the two elements that are wrong. Uh, but this is just one way to drive the test. Uh, of course, the main idea of this talk was to track what's going on behind the scenes and set yourself some goals uh, of how to, uh, uh, what to reach. And um, final item maybe is something experimental that I did for fun together with a colleague of mine. Um, we thought in QML, is it really just the JavaScript that is uh, making the difference, or is it maybe also the UI? So what we did is to start uh, tracking for all the user interfaces, whether all the buttons have been interacted. So in this case, I only clicked on the cancel button and I didn't press on the OK button. So this is, I've never not seen anyone else doing this, but if there's some uh, interest uh, in maybe also checking that for the Qt project to see whether the user has interacted with everything from the user interface, um, I think that would be a fun project to continue. Okay, but I am otherwise done very quickly. Um, I got no warning sign yet, so maybe time for one or two questions. Okay. Okay, oh, we have already finished, so no questions, but I'll be reachable here or down at our booth in the exhibition hall. Thank you.